Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create trending transitions inside Creative Studio Pro. Just an FYI, this transition effect is available in most video editing software. So it's something that's been there for ages. But the reason why I call them, you know, trending transition is because we are now able to create those inside Creative Studio Pro. And this transition effect has also been used in the latest uh, promo video for the latest character release by the uh, Creative Studio team. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you now this tutorial will be split up into two parts where the first part i'm going to show you uh, the first transition and then the set and on the second part i'm going to show you the second transition which will be released uh during this week or on the weekends so without further ado let's dive right into it so let me go ahead and just delete this and then um, i'm going to start building my scenes i'm going to go to my studio and then i'm going to go to backgrounds and i'll pick up one of the backgrounds that i have right here and then I'll just, you know, go ahead and shorten this or trim it to about, you know, seven seconds. And then the next thing I'm going to need to do is to go and uh, bring a character. So let's uh, say I'm going to use the cool guy right here. Go ahead and flip him. And then I'm going to keep the action um, as is for now. But you can, you know, feel free to change that if you want to. Now, once I've done that, I need to go ahead and select both layers by hovering or by hold lift click on my mouse and then select both layers. And then I'm going to right click and group this and then right click again and rename this group and give it a name, uh, which will be background one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and grab another background. So let's go and pick this um, city office, for example. And I'm also going to shorten it to line it up with my first scene or first background. And the next thing I'm going to go back to characters and then I'll bring this business guy right here. I'll keep the action as is wave and then I'll go ahead and extend the animation just by hovering over on the vertical uh, little line here at the end of the track. And then I can expand my animation to line it up with my background. like this and then i'll go ahead and select both layers again right click group and then i'm going to give this a name and that would be background two and let me go ahead and exit my studio and the next step is to go ahead and move or position my uh, second background on top of the first one so i'll just hold shift the, you know, the upper button or the top button on my keyboard just so I can move my background on the top and also align it with my canvas frame. Now let me click on the hand icon so I can grab my canvas so I can see a little bit better. And then another way to help you see better uh, when, you know, building stuff that outside of your canvas, uh, you can come here on the right panel of your software and you can see canvas mode. If you hover over the word show or the button that um, this called show, it tells you that show layers outside canvas. So if I click on that, this is going to give me a full preview uh, without the blur effect so I can see a little bit better and then I can turn it off, you know, when I'm done or just keep it on whichever you prefer. So now that I've built this, what I need to do is to go ahead and go to my studio and then I'm going to go to backgrounds again. And then I need to grab another background. So let me go ahead and Brad, grab this one and I'm going to expand it to line it up with my with the rest of the layers. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a character. So let's click on the characters. Now let's say we want to grab Harry. So I forgot to expand this and make it full uh, full width. And then I'm going to grab my character, position him right like that. And then I'm going to expand the animation as well to line up with my background. Now I'm going to go ahead and select both layers, so the character and the background. And I'm going to right click and group this one. I'm also going to right click again and then rename this and call this background three. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of my canvas just like that. 
and click on the hand icon so I can bring my canvas a little bit to the bottom and then go ahead and click on the selection tool one more time. So now I need to position the third background on top of the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Let me go ahead and zoom in so I can see a little bit better and make sure that this background is lined up with the one that's underneath it. Like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and add my fourth background. So we'll go to backgrounds and let's go ahead and choose this futuristic office, expand it and also expand it in the timeline to line it up with my groups. And then I'm going to go to characters. And let's pick Mike, for example. Now I'm going to position him on my background just like this. I'll keep the action as wave as it is, and I'm going to expand the animation to line it up with my background. And then I'm going to select both layers, so that the character and the background, right click, group, right click again rename and this call this background four so now that i created all my scenes what i need to do is to go ahead and also uh, position this background on top of the third one so i'll need to zoom out of my canvas and then i want to drag my canvas a little to the bottom so i can see better and then click on the selection tool one more time and then i can move my background up and line it up with the third background. And then I can go ahead and click on the magnify icon to zoom in so I can see a little bit better. Make sure it's lined up and all good. Just click on the selection tool. Go back again. So now that I have, you know, all everything built up, what I need to do is to select all the groups or all, all backgrounds like that. And then I'm going to right click and group all this together. And I'm going to start adding some custom animation. So the next step for me would be to move my playhead maybe around one second. And then I'm going to click on cut, um, add animation. So and go to properties click on position and for easing we would choose out and then choose easy as the easing effect and then I'm going to click on my first keyframe click on my background to make sure this is going to be my starting point and then I'm going to click on the second keyframe and then now I want to slide my background so I can have my fourth background on my canvas but let me just go ahead first and um, hide the canvas because I don't need this anymore but and then go back and click on the second keyframe and then I can slide my backgrounds make sure it's lined up or it's fit on my canvas like that and then I found that the best duration between uh, both keyframes is about um, a second and a half or two seconds so I'm going to expand the duration between both keyframes just like that and then before I do this what I need to do is to go ahead and um, cl double click on my group and I need to add a blur effect on a couple couple of layers so that would be background two and three uh, this just gives it you know a, a nicer look uh, so if you want to have your backgrounds uh, blurred while the transition is hap is happening you can do that if you don't want that that's up to you the transition will work you know uh, beautifully without the blur effect uh, but it's up to you so I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, effects right here and then I'm going to drag the blur effect and drop it onto my background number two. I'm also going to do the same thing for background number three. And then I will need to change the blur uh, effect, the strength of the uh, blur. So by clicking on background number two, and then I go to 
um, effects on the right panel right here. Now I see that the blur effect is right there. Once I click on it, I can then control the strength. So I can see it's already set to 10. I'm going to change it to 16 and, you know, feel free to, to, to play with this uh, the way you like. I just find that 16 is, um, is, a good, is a good strength for me. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing for background number three. So click on, on a group go back to effects on the right panel and then i'm going to click on the blur effect so i can change the uh, strength from 10 to 16. and so i should have everything set up and then i can exit my effects right here we'll go back to the timeline and then i'm going to start from the very beginning and show you what that looks like So there you have it. This is how you can achieve this trending transition. It looks pretty awesome. Um, it's pretty cool that you can use it on a lot of your videos to transition between uh, scenes. And I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next tutorial.